we're going to take a closer look at the new action cam from DJI, the Osmo Action 3. And we're going to take a closer look in how I use it, how to set up the camera and how I would color grade the footage I get out of the camera. First thing we have to do is to set up the camera to get the best possible picture out of it. Turn on the camera and I swipe down to get into the settings. And on the settings I want to scroll down to put on um, the video compression. And I want to go for the H264 because that is much easier for my computer to uh, render and play back in, the, in DaVinci Resolve. I put on anti-flicker to auto because I don't want the lights, LED lights to flicker when I'm filming. And I do screen off when record after 3 seconds because I don't want the front camera to light up every time you record somebody because they will stare to the screen, not in the lens, so that is quite annoying. And I go into the date and time, set that, and I go into the format and I format uh, my memory card. When this is done, I go into frame rate and resolution. I swipe up. And I set my resolution to 4K, 16 by 9. Normally, I only shoot in 25 FPS, but I can set it up to 50 as well. It depends on the lighting situation, but uh, in most cases, if I don't know what to do, I just go for 25 FPS. And I go into Rocksteady, that's the stabilization thing they call it in the DJI cameras. You have the horizon balancing as well, but that crops in the picture quite so much, so I don't, I don't like that. And because I do a lot of point of view uh, filming on the, my helmet, I want a little bit of movement in the picture. If you put on horizon balancing, I, feel, I just feel like the picture looks really unnatural. So I don't like that at all. When the frame rate and resolution is set, I go into the pro menu. This is normally set like this. So I put this in uh, pro mode on the exposure. I put the exposure compensation to minus 0.3 because I know Action Cam has a tendency to blow out the highlights. And I put the ISO range from 100 all the way down to 200. White balance, I normally put on uh, 5600 Kelvin, that is normal daylight. But if it's cloudy outside, I put it up to 6000 or even 6500 it depends on the weather condition but that is kind of like the things i always adjust a little bit before i start my day when i'm out riding the color i leave on decine like not on normal normal can i choose the colors for you i want to have uh, the best possible uh, picture uh, in editing afterwards so i have it in decine like and on field of view you have three different modes you have standard you have wide and you have ultra wide I will leave that in wide because I feel that is the best uh, out of the two. And this is how I set up my camera for my new auto settings. And now I can just turn off the camera. And every time I ride I want to shoot, I just start and stop the camera with the shutter button on top. And I ordered the ND filters from uh, Freewell this time around. I had Polar Pro on my GoPro. They are both uh, good brands that make uh, great uh, ND filters for this kind of action cams. And an ND filter is an absolute must when you set up the camera like this because you want to have as natural motion blur as possible when you ride and uh, it makes uh, the corners of the screen uh, blur out a little bit when you're riding. And I only ordered uh, ND filter 8 and ND filter 16. That's plenty enough for uh, this kind of video shooting.
And with all action cameras like this, you will have an issue with wind noise. There's three microphones on the camera, two in front and one underneath under a plastic cover, so it's quite hard to get to. So I tried to put on a wind slayer first from my old GoPros, and that worked really well. Here is some example. And I tried to just cover the two mix in front and uh, fill the holes underneath the plastic cover with uh, some foam from the wind slayer. That didn't work as well. It uh, got a little bit better, but it was far from uh, good enough. And uh, I tried to ride the camera without any wind protection. And um, yeah, that was really horrible. So for uh, what I have tested and tried out, there's only one option to kind of prevent uh, the wind noise from being uh, terrible, and that is to get yourself some wind slayers. Uh, you can find them cheap on eBay or uh, yeah, AliExpress or whatever site you use. And you might ask why choose the Osmo Action 3 over the GoPro Hero 11. There's a couple of reasons that made me go to for the DJI this time around not, and not the GoPro. The main reason I went for the Osmo Action 3 is the new quick release uh, plate or mounting thing underneath. It's just absolutely brilliant. I really, it makes it so much easier to just switch around on different mounting points. And you have the quick charge ability that is just blown me away how fast it is to recharge this uh, camera and you have the um, touch screen in front as well so you can operate the camera with the little screen in front and you can even use it with the gloves in rainy conditions but the most important part for me to go for the Osmo Action 3 is the d Cinelite color profile it makes it much easier for me to color correct it and uh, match it up with my two other cameras my Sony and my DJI Air 2 drone. I've seen a lot of reports online about some focus issues with the cameras not being sharp enough and that is probably the case. I haven't pixel people on my footage yet. I tend to use it when I'm riding or in motion so I haven't noticed that the picture is too soft and like GoPros for example I had a lot of sharpening uh, in the camera and I don't find that uh, the Osmo Action does that so you need to apply a little bit of sharpening in post afterwards. Without getting too much into that uh, stuff, let's head over to DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how I color correct my uh, footage from the Osmo Action 3. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve on the new timeline and I have three different clips that shows three different lighting situations. So we're going to head over to the color page. Inside the color page we're going to go over to Note 3 and I will add a couple of serial nodes. I will press down Option and press S two times to add two new serial nodes and the first one I will call white balance the second one I will call correction and the last one I will call LUT and this is a oversimplification of how to color uh, correct uh, or how I color correct my footage because it, it's so much to cover but I will just try to show you an easy way how you can bring the D cine like footage back to uh, kind of like normal color and get a much better picture quality out of it than it you would if the camera itself would choose in normal colors. So at the LUT I will right click and I will go down to LUTs and I will go into DJI and add a D log to Rec 709. And as you can see if I try to shut this on and off you will see I bring back colors to the picture. I will go into the white balance and I will find a neutral gray or a white area on the picture. I will take the color picker for white balance and I will try to set the white balance with the auto function into the program and this will uh, balance it everything out. And it's, This looks quite nice, it cooled it down a little bit. And then I head over to the correction node, the second one. I will add a little bit of sharpness, like to 46, maybe a little bit less. 
Yeah. And I will take a look at the waveform. And the waveform, the highlights are quite high but not blown out. So I will drop the highlights just a little bit. And I see that the blacks are crushed. And you can see it in the picture. It's quite dark. So I will go over to the lift wheel and I will rise it until I see a little bit details in the shadows again. Not too much. Around there is nice. And I can highlight all the nodes and I can turn them on and off. And you see how easy it is to bring back a good color and a good picture from these and the like. We go over to clip number two and I will do the same here. Press down the option key, add two new serial nodes. The last one I will right click, go into LUT, DJI and D-Log to Rec709. <coughs> I will make this uh, LUT available in the description down below if anyone else wants it. You can also use it on the uh, Mavic drones, all the DJI cameras that have the Cine-like uh, color profile. First one, I will add a white balance. Uh, I actually like this picture. It, it looks kind of good. I don't think I would do too much to the, color, to the white balance, but I will go into the correction node and I will add a little bit of sharpness. And I will take a look at the waveform over on the right side. And I see that the highlights are quite blown out and you can see that on the sky as well. I will try to lower the highlights yeah, that helped a lot. The overall picture is bright enough, so I don't want to do too much to that, but I want to lift the shadows a little bit because you can see on the glove and the dashboard, it's a little bit dark and you can see it on the waveforms that the um, blacks are kind of crushed. So go over to the lift wheel, open up the shadows a little bit, not too much, just that you have an overall good picture. You can see that on the waveform. You don't want the highlights to clip and you don't want the blacks to go under zero because then it's crushed. And I think this is good. I will highlight just the correction node and see what that little correction did. I'm happy with that. And to see all the nodes. This is how it looks like in these in the like and this is after I corrected it. And last clip. We do the same, two nodes, go into the LUT, DJI, I will go down to the white balance picker, I will bring it to the helmet that is quite uh, natural or neutral. That brings a little bit of yellow tint to, uh, to the picture and a little bit of red. I will go over to the second node, the correction node, and I will see on the waveform that the um, highlights are blown out so I will try to lower the highlights without affecting the white balance too much maybe bring down the gain yeah and I see that the blacks are crushed and I see that on my jacket that I need to bring up the shadows a little bit so I go to the lift wheel and I bring that up just above uh, zero. Now I can see the details in the jacket. And I want to add a little bit of sharpness. I go zoom into the eye. And I will see how much I can add without destroying the... Yeah, 46 is good. Now fit. And we're going to press Shift F. You can see, that, uh, see the clip in full screen. And I'm happy with that. So, is this the best action camera on the market? Well, I don't care. It suits me really well. It's the newest and the best action cam for my need and my usage. As I've probably shown you in this video, the picture quality from these kind of cameras are not the best, but it can serve a really nice purpose if you know how to color correct it and if you know how to set it up and uh, if you use it in the correct way. 
I'm really happy with the camera. It's built like a tank. All the new features on the camera with the touchscreen in front and uh, how to operate and use the camera are just light years ahead of what uh, my old GoPro had. I'm really happy with the purchase and uh, I can highly recommend this camera for everyone. I think we're just going to leave it there. Take care, stay safe. I'll see you in the next one.